And so I'm going to ask Stephen to come and share his testimony with us. Let's welcome Stephen.
things of this world that do not last. Through meaningless relationships, through music, through media. Though I do not drink or do drugs, I, I still sought after these things to find love and fulfillment. So fill, fill that emptiness and long, longing. This is my heart. So I to really find fulfillment through music, especially since I play drums. Through that, uh, it was never really enough. And uh, yeah, just through that time, I really started questioning why that was so. Why this world was filled with emptiness and why there were things such as murder stealing and killing. I think through that, that emptiness and loneliness really turned into, into uh, hate and anger. Really being angry and angry at it's those with seemingly perfect lives that everything was okay. You know, I looked at you know, high school kids and you know, everything was just perfect for them. Yeah, and I just didn't get why. And, uh, I kept questioning these things, and eventually, you know, that that hate and that anger really consumed me, and it started to really turn me into the person that I didn't want to be. I couldn't escape it. Through that, there's a lot of frustration. I couldn't answer my own questions by myself, and even through school, they didn't answer that for me. But uh, despite this, there's hope. So like I said, I started going out to church towards the end of my sophomore year of high school. It was actually my brother who brought me out. He'd been asking me for months on end. And every Friday night, um, basically we would talk even for a couple of minutes, even though we talk a lot throughout the week. And I'd ask him how fellowship was. It was always just, you know, good, you should come out. <laughs> and I said, like, okay. But uh, Friday night was uh, my night. You know, I guess with school, uh, you know, I always felt like I needed to take a break, so I played this game called Maple Sword. <laughs> and uh, every Friday night was double experience night. And so I would just be stuck uh, playing Maple Sword um, for months on end, and I, I told Anthony that I would start going once the double experience runs out. So <laughs> he kept asking me, and it was the same, it was a repeat every Friday night. Yeah, eventually uh, it ended. <laughs> I, uh, that was the night I came out. And, um, yeah, so I started um, just hanging out with my brother. Um, so I mainly went to church, not because I had the intention of learning about God or about Jesus. Uh, at that point, I didn't really question if there was a God. I questioned a lot of things that were on the spirit, but not necessarily the spirit. Yeah, I just I just went out because I felt obligated to because, because he asked me and because um, it was one of the few times that we actually hung out and I knew he was leaving for college and I didn't want that um, special time to go to waste. So yeah, basically we just kept going and also we just went I guess to try to make friends too. You know. Originally um, there, there were a lot of people we were chatting and I kept going and. There was always people asking me uh, how, how I was doing each week. And, uh, I honestly thought that church people were just nosy. <laughs> getting up in my business. What kids call nowadays you know, getting up in my grill. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, ultimately I just I realized that um, that they did it out of love. It was just a matter of my own heart that I wasn't really used to people actually going up to me and talking to me asking me how I was doing throughout the week. I think that's, that's the reason why I kept going out to church. And uh, I eventually started going out to church on Sundays. And this was during the summer. That's when I started going out more consistently. And, um, it was that, that summer in 2008 that uh, Pastor Kev he sat me down after Sunday school for service. He just said that he wanted to check up on me, and I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, you just said you wanted to check up on me and share the gospel with me. And I guess even though I've been coming out to church, I didn't take anything seriously. Um, that uh, usually when I hear messages, I would just scroll around and uh, they pass out a piece of paper. I would just draw pictures of my brother wearing a clown hat. What? <laughs> <laughs> just pictures like that. I didn't really pay attention, but uh, it was this time where I really paid attention to God's word. And, like I said, Pastor Kev shared the gospel with me. And, um, if you don't know what that is, it's a literal translation. Um, it's basically good news of the Bible. And um, yeah, before that, I guess I didn't really think about God, and I thought you were a Christian because you just went to church. So I had a really shallow understanding of the church and, um, about God. But um, yeah, you just opened the Bible and you went through it. And the first thing. So the way you shared the gospel with me, I can really recall how you did it, but when something like this, it just started off with really showing me and telling me who God is in Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. It says in Genesis 1 1 that God is the creator of the universe, and He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. And then in Genesis 3, it continues that after man, or that after God made man and woman, that sin is introduced because Adam and Eve ate up the fruit of the tree. And what sin is, is basically just uh, an act against God, an act of disobedience, an act that displeases God. And through that, um, since Adam and Eve sin, uh, just as much as our genetics are passed down from one generation to the other, Sin is also passed down and procreated, procreated through other people. And uh, because of sin, uh, that uh, God must punish it, that we find that God is holy, that God is not like us, God is uh, without sin. And even in Romans 6.23, it says that for the wages of sin is death. And that um, you can, I guess, kind of view God as a judge. Right? There's a judge in the courtroom and person who is being accused for their um, wrongdoings. And, um, you find that, you know, murderers don't get away, right? That they have to be punished for their crimes. Very much like that, God has to punish sin in that way because he's righteous. Because he's holy and without sin. And um, because of that, um, that he must punish it, there's hell and heaven. And I don't really think about this either, too. I just kind of with the flow of church, to really think about it. Heaven and hell is a reality, and that because of sin, that we must be punished. And for those who sin, uh, they have to go to hell, which is eternal damnation and eternal punishment. And that also brings up the depravity of man, that man cannot earn his way into heaven, that there is no one perfect because we all have sin. Except for Jesus, there is no one perfect. You can even look around to your neighbors. There's no one perfect. You can look at me. I'm definitely not perfect. That, uh, that God uh, has to punish sin in this way. Again, uh, with this brokenness, mankind is saying there is hope. Uh, John 3.16, which is one of the uh, verses that really stuck out to me, uh, Pastor captured me, basically said that God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the sin. Our, on the cross for our sins, um, so that we may have life in heaven. And we kind of think of the concept of Christ on the cross, and we ask kind of, why did he have to do that? Because God is eternal, and our sins are uh, an eternal crime against God, so there has to be an eternal payment for it. Uh, yeah. And Christ paid, um, paid, was paid for our sins for those who believe in him that he died on the cross. So I was basically the, uh, the gist of what Pastor Kev shared with me. I kind of thought about it and it was a lot to take in because I didn't really think about in heaven and hell and I wasn't sure if I was ready to be a Christian because on the CTF wall downstairs you know, there were a list of rules that said you know, obey your parents, don't swear, don't do this. I wasn't sure if I was to 
I was ready to really give my life over. Uh, I guess I just wanted to live by my own rules and live life the way I wanted to. And I was re very much just clinging on to my own disbelief um, of whether this was all really true and also um, because I was still clinging on to the ways of this world that I sought love and fulfillment through uh, not things in the Bible but through this world through music and the media. I kind of, I guess, I kind of denied him and said, you know, I wasn't ready. And he said, I was okay. And I didn't have to um, make a decision right away. But he just kind of brought up the verses again, and I thought about it. And I was really just broken down in tears. Uh, my own sin. And pretty much what he shared with me and what I just shared with you pretty much answered the questions I had been asking him you know, for that entire year of why there is murder and why there is sin and things like that. And I found that what the Bible said was true because it matched with what is going on in the world and what happens in society. And uh, it just it just clicked and made sense and I thought of not only in the context of society but I looked at myself and I looked inward and uh, I really saw the need for a savior that was just broken in my own anger and hate anything about it. I was going to go anywhere in life. And, uh, I was right there, and then uh, I really stepped out in faith and accepted Christ as my Savior on July 28th, 2008. And that's the story of how I came to faith, and uh, that God's love doesn't end there, that the story doesn't end there, that um, He continually um, blesses me. And throughout these three years, I've really grown in my faith really grown as a man coming to age. And, uh, God has really restored those broken relationships with my brother and sister and my parents. Not only have done that, but uh, really provided me with uh, a church family to really care for me and to have friends also. And, uh, yeah, and even in college, for you guys you know, I don't deal with stress very well, so I continually have to uh, rely on God I don't have my own strength. Yeah, that's, that's really just the story of how I came to faith, and that's really the story of God's life. Thank you for that wonderful testimony, Stephen. It's been a joy. I remember joining with Estella and with Anthony. And you prayed for my brother. And, and we did, and to, to see you come to Christ, and now to see you loving the Lord and teaching Bible studies and, and, and serving in so many different ways, it's, it's really exciting to see the request is done in your life. Stephen, upon your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>